Do you want to be successful and well-respected as a professional in the music business? Don't do these things. What's up, everybody? My name is Quentin Koblenz, and I've been working in the music business for about 10 years as a producer, songwriter, and audio engineer. And today I've got five things that I think it's really important that you avoid doing if you really want to thrive in this business and take your career to the next level. And number one, for a lack of a better way to say it, is clout chasing, or in other words, trying to gain influence by association. And so basically you're devoting a lot of your time trying to associate yourself with successful individuals, groups, media outlets, viral trends, and so on and so forth. Now, it's not a bad thing to do some of this stuff. And in fact, you probably are gonna have to do some of it if you wanna grow your brand. That's kind of just part of the business. But there's a trap that a lot of people fall into early in their careers where they become dependent, entirely dependent on outside sources rather than building something for themselves that they can really take ownership of. If your end game coming into the music business is simply to land a record deal with your favorite label or you know, get a million streams on your song or get a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, my advice to you is, is just dream a little bit bigger. Uh, dream bigger than the clout stuff and work towards long-term ownership and sustainability. You actually don't need to be famous in order to make good money in the music business. So just take it slow and work for, you know, genuine relationships and organic growth. Don't go signing a terrible deal because it'll make you look successful or don't go buying Instagram followers and don't feel like you have to copy every single viral trend because you're trying to blow up overnight. Stay patient and think bigger and more long-term than all this shallow stuff. Number two is spam marketing. And by that, I'm talking about like when you drop a new song or a beat pack or a video or some, some form of content that you want to promote and you get on Instagram and just start tagging everybody like all kinds of random people that had nothing to do with the content. You're sending links to everybody's DM, you're text blasting all your contacts, you know, posting the same content on your feed over and over every couple hours. As somebody who has often been on the receiving end of this kind of marketing, I gotta tell you, it's pretty annoying. It comes across as unprofessional and it makes you appear like you're sort of desperate for attention, which is never a good look if you're trying to grow your brand. So rather than doing stuff like this, you know, focus on making your content engaging enough that it's gonna draw people in. And from there, you can always dedicate a bit of extra cash to, you know, boosting a social post or running an ad, uh, you know, just ways that you can put it in people's feed without spamming them. And if you're gonna actually try and reach out to somebody in a private message, maybe just to, you know, get a conversation going, make sure it's genuine. Uh, make sure it's not a copy and paste message because that comes across as really impersonal and doesn't usually lead to a quality interaction. Number three is always asking for favors. So sometimes you really need a favor from somebody and it's okay to ask um, from time to time, especially if you've got a relationship with this person where, you know, you're bringing value and you can kind of pay back the favor in some other way. However, there are always those people you know what I'm talking about, who are just asking for favor after favor after favor. You know, whether it's like asking for a discount or something for free or social media stuff like, you know, a shout out or reposting their content and so on. And if you're somebody who does this, there's a couple negative effects that this is gonna start to have for you. So once again, like clout chasing, it's gonna put you in this position of dependence where now you have to rely on somebody else going out of their way to help you. It can also lead to people feeling used and like you're trying to take advantage of them, which is never a good thing for any sort of long lasting relationship. And actually over time, it's probably gonna make people less inclined to wanna help you because they feel like every time that they say yes, you're just gonna keep asking for more stuff. So no, I'm not saying don't ever ask for favors. I'm just saying be wise about it and make sure that you're prioritizing and protecting your business relationships and that you're not wearing people out by over asking. Number four is being inflexible. So you're working on a song or a project with somebody else or a team of people and all of a sudden you start to run into some creative differences. So there's a fine line here because you don't wanna become so passive as a creative that you never 
express your ideas or vouch for your vision. But on the other hand, if you're somebody who's never willing to go with the flow and you know trust somebody else's instincts, it's gonna be really hard for you to thrive in a collaborative setting, which is a huge part of the music business. And one of the things that often happens to us as creatives is over time, we start to kind of get stuck in our own habits and our own way of doing things. And while yes, if something's working for you, you shouldn't just abandon your process and throw away whatever's working. It's also healthy to be pushed, to get outside of our own little box and do things, you know, a way that we wouldn't normally do them. It's part of what helps us to grow and become more skilled and have a broader uh, creative range. Really the key point here is you can be passionate and even opinionated but just don't let your ego prevent you from being a team player. And finally, number five is saying yes to everything. Now, when you're just starting off in the music business, you probably won't have a lot of different opportunities to choose from. You probably won't be able to be very selective. You'll need to say yes to some stuff that you maybe don't really, really want to. So maybe you got to do a show in a coffee shop for 10 or 15 people, or maybe you need to, you know, sell a, a beat to somebody or a mix super cheap or even free, you know, just to establish the relationship. The key here is that as you do start to build some momentum with your career and get more opportunities, you need to make sure that you start setting boundaries and learning when to say no. So for example, maybe you're gonna have to say no to a job because the client just doesn't have the budget to justify the amount of hours that you're gonna put into the project. You know, maybe you're at the point in your career where you're starting to try to raise your prices a little bit and you know increase the perceived value of your work. And so you have to say no when maybe a returning client is asking for a discount or, or the old rate. You know, maybe you have to say no to an opportunity that while it might have benefits, it just doesn't really match your long-term goals or vision. You know, sometimes you need to say no to stuff simply for the sake of your mental health and your personal life. And this is probably the most important part because when you are always saying yes to your career, as a result, you're gonna be saying no to other stuff. You know, so stuff like rest and getting enough sleep or exercise or family, friends, your spiritual well-being, you know? If you're not prioritizing these things, you're probably not gonna be thriving as a person, which in turn is gonna make it a lot harder for you to thrive in your career. So there you go. There's five things that I personally recommend that you avoid doing. Next week, I'm gonna drop a video talking about five things that I think you should be doing. So make sure and check that out when it drops. If you found this video helpful or interesting, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Um, you know, maybe there's something that you thought of that could have been on this list. So I'd love to hear from you. Uh, you know, let's keep this discussion going. Thanks for watching and till next time, go inspire somebody. That's the cue.